Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone. We're back. <laughs> I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. And I had a wonderful Thanksgiving and a birthday celebration. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, that was all about me. But anyway, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us again. I know you missed us. It's okay. I know you missed us, but we're back in full effect and we have a wonderful show for you once again. And I hope everyone has been tuning into the radio show, the Life Radio Network. I mean, I hope you all have been listening to our vibe and our motion and, you know, getting with the groove. So I hope you guys have been tuning in to the radio station because we have big things coming along and we just doing the darn thing. We just doing it. So again, I hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I wonder if anyone did any, like, what do you call it? The, the fried turkeys where you take the whole turkey and you put it in the oil and you let it fry. And I wonder if anyone did that. So if any of you did that, chime in. I'm curious to know how that actually worked out and how did it taste? I've never had one. So before we get into our show and get everything moving and grooving, let me introduce my host, my hostess for the mostest, Mr. Gerald Anderson. Come on aboard, Gerald. Come on, Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good evening. You always doing? talk about how loud I am, so I put on a soft voice for you. That was soft? That, that wasn't soft? That was, I thought that was soft, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am a whole 53. Wow. I love it. You even told the actual age. Oh, yeah, because I love aging. I mean, that's probably rare to hear a woman say that, but actually enjoy aging because you, you it's just so much you start to possess and dwell in i i love it i love it so it's just gaining more wisdom and understanding with life get it life, life. I did it. <laughs> so yeah so i love aging i might be the first who cares okay <laughs> so how was your thanksgiving did you have a good thanksgiving well my thanksgiving was Good, you know, my son couldn't make it home. You know, did you he, cry? He, no, I did not cry. Men don't cry, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he had you know, he had t finals and stuff like that going on, gonna go and going to be going on, and then he's gonna come back next month for three weeks. So he decided oh. to stay there in Salt Lake City and handle his business. <laughs> oh, see, that's awesome, that's awesome. So he's just like his daddy, he wants to just stick to you know. The education and just try and be smart. We trying to get it done. Hey, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. So we have another awesome show. And I mean, like, I don't know if the people understand like our lineups that we have coming up, not only this show this evening, but future shows. We have such awesome individuals, and the lineup is just uh, yeah. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to keep up. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, so again, an, a great, um, show we have, um, coming up for you all. But before we get to that, we're going to, um, shoot over to our positive media moment, I believe with Buff Patterson. Wish she here. She's on time. No buzzer. I know. Here. Don't be trying to do that. She don't feel good. We gotta give her good yes. vibes. This is yes. the time. Yes. Funny <laughs> nose and stuff like. Yeah. She's all trying to bundled up. You. In Los Angeles, California, all bundled up like it's freezing cold. Bundled up. Ooh, it's it's, <laughs> it's sixty five today or seventy. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I first of all I want to say hi, all the life peeps. Hey, hey, I like her. Happy holidays from, uh, from <laughs> us to you. And uh, today, Buffy is bringing life's positive media moment. And today's positive life media moment, I'm going to be talking about a little girl who's only 13 years old that got accepted to medical school. Can you believe that? Medical school. 13 years old. Wow. At 13, I was still on Schoolhouse Rocks. So. <laughs> 
five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Anyway, that, <laughs> I think thirteen. I was still playing with rocks. Right. <laughs> well, well, this little girl, what makes her so special? At three years old, she was already reading chapter books. By the time she was eleven, she was taking high school courses. Mm. Now again, thirteen, she's already had two degrees, and. She got accepted. She applied for medical school, got accepted. But look, before y'all just try to get accepted to medical school, your GPA has to be up. Your your MCATs have to be done. It's a whole other curriculum. And she actually um, got her some of her degrees from University of Arizona. If anybody know about the University of Arizona, a dead person can get that degree. Just let y'all know. The University of Arizona is accepting all people. And... Um, what makes her special is she actually got accepted to a medical school in Alabama. Let me make sure I got the name of what the school that accepted her. It is called in Alabama. The school is called Yearsnick School in Alabama. It's accepting this 13 year old little girl. You know, we have to like build up our children because she's 13 years old and she still enjoys baking, playing soccer, playing with her friends. She's just an extraordinary kid. We have to look out for these, for our small ones. And this little girl is an exception. 13 years old going to medical school. I can't wait to see what she's going to do at 21. All right. Awesome. Sounds good. Now go get something for that cold. Yeah. yeah I'm and gonna, and I'm going to take some NyQuil or, or a hot toddy. <laughs> do the hot toddy. The hot toddy will have you like a new it'll, one it'll, tomorrow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But the well, show must go on. So we appreciate you coming on. on. The show must go on. As you say and continue to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but feel better. All right. Get you some whiskey. Okay. Some whiskey. <laughs> Man, these kids going to school and going to medical school early. I think the last year we right? had somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Reading novels at 11. We I don't even know if I was able to spell novel at 11. What's that? I don't know. I have to ask my sister. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so but I tell you, they awesome. advance these days. I love it, though. I think that's yeah. like something to definitely be proud of and honored of. So, hey, mm. you got it. Go with it. <laughs> so you want to... Um, introduce our guests or well, our um our first guest was on the cover of the summer of 2020 yes. his, his name is norman d golden the second and oh, norman is, is best known for co-starring as devin butler in the movie cop and a half i don't know if you guys remember that movie but he did star burt Reynolds and norman was in there he he was a little kid then so, so i don't think this version of norman was playing him playing a role <laughs> he was yeah he won 11. <laughs> well, Norman has started and co-starred in several movies such as There Are No Children, On Promised Land, America's Dream, The Boy Who P Painted Christ Black, and the remake of Moby Dick. And he's also played with some really great stars such as Oprah Winfrey, Wesley Snipes, and among others. So let's bring Norman to the stage and let him tell you. Yes! I don't hey. think it's an applause thing. We need to get the a sound effect for applause and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Norman, how you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. That's good to talk to you again. I yeah, I was you say good. About six months ago now. Yeah, it's about. Yeah. yeah. And Norman looking cold as well. What is with yeah. the weather? Everybody's cold. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's relative. I mean, it's not. East Coast, 30 degrees, but for us Californians, it's, it's chilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Y'all Californians bundled up more than we are here on the East Coast. Like for real. Oh, <laughs> you seen Buffy. <laughs> yeah, I did. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, to tell us, I mean, you, you got a great story. I mean, you started as, as a child into acting, but uh, how did you get into acting in the first place? So, yeah, I actually um, got my parents into it. Uh, you know, normally you, know, you hear these stories where, you know, the parents take their children and sign them up for all these, you know, acting classes or whatever. Um, it was me who um, I got inspired by watching, you know, all of the, sh you know, the shows that you remember, if you guys remember TGIF and, you know, even like the Cosby mm -hmm. show. Yeah. 
where, um, you know, I would see like the kids acting and, you know, I was always like, I could do that. I mean, I was old enough to know that it was, you know, it wasn't like it was, it wasn't make believe. So, I mean, it is, but, you know, but that it, it was like a real, like, like reality to it, so to speak, in terms of like work. Um, but I, I still just looked, it just looked like the kids were having, you know, a lot of fun. So uh, long story short, you know, I bugged my parents for about a couple months. Like, I want to do that. I want to be an actor, you know, not knowing at six years old, like what it really, you know, took to, to do that. Mm -hmm. and fortunately, my auntie, one of my aunties um, actually had her son enrolled in um, this acting, this commercial workshop. And my parents were, or my, my mom was talking to her and, you know, she's like, yeah, Norman's been bugging us about, you know, this acting stuff. And she's like, yeah, you should do it. He's precocious. He's smart. He's this, he's that. And my mom was like, yeah, I know, but I don't know nothing about all of that. <laughs> <laughs> she ended up, um, uh, my mom was convinced. And so uh, my dad and her um, and my mom, you know, decided to enroll me in this, this workshop. But here's a clicker. So we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. Mm -hmm. So workshops took place out here in California. I'm mean, gonna always tell this part of the story because I have to, I, you know, I'm, I'm forever eternally grateful for my parents because mm -hmm. it shows the commitment that they had mm -hmm. to their children in terms of supporting mm -hmm. their dreams. Um, because a lot of people wouldn't have done this. So it, the the course was uh, it was like a six week course. And it took place out here in California, but because my parents worked for the airlines, they had air, you know, the airfare um, mm -hmm. or whatever. So every Wednesday, my mom and I would fly out, and then she had a really good friend that would pick us up from the airport, LAX. We drive out to Burbank, which is about a forty-five minute drive without traffic. She would wait for us. I would do the workshop, and then we would fly back, catch the red eye, back to Charlotte, and then the next day I would go to school. So we did that for six weeks. Oh wow. Yeah. And um, at the end of the uh, workshop, uh, there were, you know, agents and, you know, managers there. And uh, there were th actually three agents and all three of them actually wanted to represent me. But the um, the lady who was uh, running the I guess the, the whole thing, the mm -hmm. workshop, she, you know, kind of pointed my mom and dad into the, the right direction in terms of, you know, who would be best for my career at the time. And from there, you know, I ended up uh, auditioning. Fortunately, maybe about three or four months after all this took place, um, my dad was able to actually put in for a transfer because they want we wanted to be here in L.A. He actually ended up getting like bumped to Charlotte because of seniority. But then he put in for a transfer. So I was able to start auditioning on a regular basis. And about maybe six months or a year into that process, um, I booked mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, not there, no children here. Um, True Colors, a guest guest role on that, and then oh. uh, maybe about a year. No, not not a year. Maybe another six months or so after that, I booked Cop and F. Oh wow, wow! So so let's let's go back. So you said six years old, right? This was something you discovered you wanted to do. Yeah. What was it at six years old that said, you know what? I want to be an actor, like because right. again, the average bear. Mm -hmm. We don't think like, well, I know I didn't think like this. So I'll put it like that. <laughs> you know? No, yeah. That, yeah, I know. So I'm guilty. So me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. I think about this at six years old. So what was it at six years old that you were so alert and aware to the point of, oh, I want to be an actor? That's like awesome. For, for me, um, you know, my feeling of, like I said, re, you know, relating to watching like the Cosby kids or mm -hmm. kids on full house or any of these shows, you know, again, I was old enough to know that, okay, this is like make, this is not real, like this TV world. It's, it's make believe. Right. But there was a, there was a, there was just something in it. I don't know if it's just, if it's, you can call it spirit, God, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, it, there was a, there was a connectedness to, you know, the work that was being done. And I really like related to it, even though, like I said, I didn't know really what that world was about, but it's right. really fun and it felt, you know, um, it just felt right. You know, it and, felt and, like you belong, like, you, yeah. like, yeah. Okay. And I'll say that I think, you know, a lot of times we don't give children, you know, the credit that 
mm. they deserve. I mean, it's it's more or less like you look you looked at when you know when you're a child, you're just a child. You don't know none. You get, and it's like no children. We're we're children are miniature adults. Yeah, like, yeah. I have, right. a, I have an eighteen month old, and I you know I'm like I watch her grow and you know discover things, and some of the things that she does, it's like. I know I didn't teach her that, but she's right. like everything up. So I think, you know, just going back to the question, like at six years old, yes, it was a young age, but like we really should start to give, you know, more credit to mm -hmm. children because they know, like I did, I knew that this was for me at six. Right. And, and that's, that's what I'm glad you, you mentioned that Norman is that because I think, you know, we probably don't give kids enough credit because we think, oh, you're six. You don't know. You just see what you see on TV and want to, oh, I want to be that. But again, I think if we give, you know, kids enough credit, they sometimes probably would teach us a lot in all honesty. And that's um, that's what my mom used to always say, you know, like when we were growing up, even now, you know, she's got, you know, her grandchildren or whatever. And she say, you know, like I, I learned a lot. Like I knew what I knew growing up, mm -hmm. but I start having children and they start having children. Like I learned even a lot more. I learned a lot from my, from my children. I mean, that's, we're human beings. So it's possible to learn something from, you know, um, from another the, human. Yeah. Another human. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I thought I would help you out there. Just, you know, <laughs> So we had a question from uh, Burl Brackett. She says, are you still acting? And, and if so, what is your most recent film? So I am actually more, involved behind the scenes, writing, directing, and producing. Uh, I did, I, I was in two short films that I, um, one of them, I, I was just a producer. The other, I actually wrote it as well. Um, one is called Hollywood Kid. And that's basically loosely based around, you know, my experiences as a former child actor, you know, kind of mm -hmm. navigating, you know, the industry as it is today, you know, and then also literally flipping the script and becoming, you know, behind the scenes in, ter in terms of, uh, you know, my activities or whatnot. Um, so that one's on um, uh, Amazon Prime. And then I have another uh, short film called Misperception. And that deals with the complex relationship between the black community and law enforcement. Um, and that was, I actually did that, produced that because of a, um, a conversation that you know my cousin and I were having with his brother who's also a producer he works he does a lot of Marvel uh, projects and stuff now um, mm -hmm. but we, we were over <clears throat> the holidays, so we were talking you know and he was sharing like as a as a black detective in Milwaukee you know there's <sighs> the black community <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to, we don't like to hear this, but it's like you know we have we have a lot mm -hmm. of responsibility. You know what I'm saying? That we need to start kind of looking at in terms of like how we are with each other. Yes. Uh, and you know, my cousin. I mean, being in law enforcement, I mean, you get a chance to see you know a lot of things that most people don't. You see the underbelly of humanity, literally, and mm. it's, it's not pretty. So with that title misperception is more or less saying like, you know, we're not, cause some people are like, well, are you trying to say like, you know, well, cops have it bad, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not, we're not taking any size. We're not, you know, trying to, um, you know, say who's right or wrong. It's like there as, like I said, humanity, there's always two sides to each story. And the general consensus is we all need to get our mind right. Oof. You know, and get yeah. our heart right. You know, you I mean? say that again. That is the truth. So that that and sometimes I, I, the truth hurts. <laughs> and I yeah, and I know, and I and I take the time to, to explain it because that's that's a project that's that's actually really you know near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, because it's it's something that's you know we need to really kind of start talking about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I agree. So so is that one on Amazon too? That is also on Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, I know Gerald's like, wait a minute, you you went off on this tangent. Like, where can we find your stuff? Yes, yeah, so that's what we're doing. Oh, wow. That's, that's something I like. I'm going to check yeah, that out. Yeah, okay. definitely tune into that one for sure. Yeah. So, you know, we all got Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. We got, we, you know, <laughs> man, we got, how would your question it? How was your experience as a child actor? It was fun. It was a lot of fun. 
Um, it was a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of hard work. Well, you in awe of, uh, of working with you know, the big names, Burt Reynolds. And yeah, Lester right. And like, <laughs> I really, I wasn't. And well, I, mm -hmm. I put you like this. I didn't even know who Burt Reynolds was, you know, and I think that was probably my saving grace because mm -hmm. I was able to still really just be myself and not be like so starstruck. And by the time I start working with like, oh, well, when I worked with Oprah, that was actually my second. Uh, my second piece um, that I'd done. Um, and of course, I mean, I knew who she was. Uh, mm -hmm. my, parent, my mom and grand grandparents watched her show and all this stuff and uh, the color purple and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's up there with Jesus. Yeah, she, she is. <laughs> no, yeah, a little, a little bit. So <laughs> I, knew who she, I knew who she was. Um, but I still, it still was, I think by that time I'd been around, you know, some famous faces and people that I'd seen. So I, I wasn't as starstruck. So it just, mm -hmm. it, you know, it really became more about like, okay, these are my co-stars. These are people that I, I work with. And it sounds funny because I'm like, I'm a kid and they're an adult, but I'm like, these are my colleagues, so to speak. <laughs> um, that's kind of how, how it was. Um, I think, let's see. One, there was one time that I was a little like, oh, you know, Star Trek. And this, I wasn't even, I hadn't even worked with this person, but I was at a Grammy, um, the Grammy after party. Uh, attended the Grammys that year. And I saw, I'm into music too. So I saw Isaac Hayes and um, Quincy Jones. Yeah. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's Quincy Jones. That's, that was like the first time in my life. And I'm, now, mind you, this, I was so like, had done all this stuff, but I saw right. and I was like, oh, wait a minute. These two, like, great. Yes, composers. And, and yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. So I went up and I went up to him and I'm like, I don't even, I'm like stumbling over this. <laughs> like, <"Yo." laughs> hey, he's like, how you doing? Nice to meet you. you know? So it's like the one time in life where I really was like, oh. Like, <laughs> but that's good. And that just shows the, humility that you had even at a young age is this you know with you stating that you just looked at you know like the a other actors that you've worked with you just looked at them as your co you know your co-workers so to speak but um but again it's like I think the bottom line is like if you look at individuals as individuals you know we all have 24 hours in a day mm -hmm. it's just everyone uses theirs different and you just treat them like you know regular people you know because yeah. they don't have anything that you can you can you don't have or you couldn't achieve so yeah. to speak yeah. and so. that's what I was basically talking about like with the project that i did you know right that is like we're talking about law enforcement black community but at the basis of that 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 project is like you know humanity deserves respect and that's mm -hmm. everybody. everybody's a part of that you know what i mean and yeah you know, right. things we get tied up in hierarchy and who makes what and who's mm -hmm. doing it. It's like we're all we all deserve that same respect. And obviously you give respect to people who have done extraordinary things, but that doesn't make them better than my dad used to always say, you know, be the best, but better than no one. So be oh, your best. you know, I you're like not that. better than any other person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? I like that. Yeah. yeah. So we got got another question, but I, I really didn't want to put this question up here. Yeah, because I don't know who this Gerald Anderson person is, but go ahead. Well, would you be interested in collaborating with Gerald Anderson Sr. on a new film project? It's time for Gerald's second movie, but <laughs> I am not looking at doing a second movie. So, so I, I guess I could answer that one for you. <laughs> I was, was going to say, wait, who is Gerald Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe one day, Gerald, you'll you'll you know have a Gerald, different. Thought. If you have if you have a train if you have a change of heart, mm -hmm. you know I'm I'm definitely open to collaboration. I love what you're doing with you know the magazine and everything like that. And you know, hey, yeah. possibilities. Like, and I'm a great actress. Gerald, I'm a wonderful actress. Had you not known? Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man, he's like, okay. 
<laughs> but no, I, just, I don't think you you probably don't know, but I did a movie in 2015 mm -hmm. for one of my books, Standing Firm. So that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't. And it was excellent, excellent movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is it so? Can I check that out somewhere? Like, yeah, it's on. It's on YouTube. It's on the Life Magazine's YouTube. YouTube. Okay, I'll yeah. check that out. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. I'm. I'm. I'm like this. So, you have anything up and you know anything new coming out or um, anything you want us to kind of take a look at? Because I know you said you're you're not acting acting at the moment, right? Yeah, not not at the moment. Um, right. I, I have a, I have a couple of. Um, a couple other of projects, projects that you're projects that I'm I'm working on. They're you know in the development stage, so okay. you know, I can't really speak on them too much. But all I all I can say is just stay tuned. You know, if you, you guys have all my socials and stuff. Um, you know, just stay tuned for any updates that I you know got coming up. And um, yeah, that's the best I can do right now. Right. Well, you do, well, you're doing it. You've been doing it since six. So yeah, since six years old. That's, that, that's amazing. <laughs> was, you know, at six years old, I was watching TV, but I didn't. I didn't think that I could be an actor or anything. Wasn't making those. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I, just I love know, it. I, I think, think that's like so that, awesome. So. You know, it's, it's great that some people can think like that at six years old and, and then have an opportunity to pursue it mm -hmm. and, and make it come real. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's, that's like right. I, said, I mean, I, I always, you know, I give thanks to, you know, my parents because they, I mean, Absolutely. I, I feel like there's a lot of kids that do know what they do and then they ended up, they end up doing it once they, you know, once they become adults or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you know, my parents was like, well, hey, like if this is an interest, like let's, see what happens and that's where it it went and they you know they have i have two uh, two other siblings so i mean i say mm -hmm. my, my entire family was you know really supportive of you know that time in my life and my career so i really you know hats off to them i always you know say you know give uh, appreciation because it's it's it be, it's rightfully a lot so. mm -hmm. yeah, rightfully yeah, so yeah. and yeah. so you know, I, I definitely appreciate you know having that opportunity to and um, and those buddy passes came in Came in handy. <laughs> oh, did yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the fly across country. That was uh -huh. good. frequent flyer miles. There you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So Norman, we appreciate you joining us tonight. You know, taking Absolutely. time out of your schedule, and uh, you know, yeah, you, like man. I said, you Norman's on the cover of the summer 2023 issue of the Life Magazine. So if you want to learn more about Norman, you can also you can grab that copy and read that story. Uh, he's, he's an amazing person, as you can see. He's very, oh my gosh, talking, yeah. he's a great person. So it was great yeah, talking that. to you once again. Yeah, Norman. yeah, likewise, man. Always, yeah, good time. absolutely. Right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. He's awesome. <laughs> have, have a good evening and don't get too cold out there. <laughs> I won't. Turn the heat on. <laughs> 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 All, right. Got socks on and everything. <laughs> All right, take care, man. All, All right, right, thanks, Norman. <laughs> I'm telling you, this cold weather is messing with everyone. I'm, I'm, this is, it's not fun. It's just not fun. Yeah, Dude, okay. I got two socks. I can't even remember the last time I wore two socks. I got you two on, socks you on, on the beach in Florida. What you doing with two socks on? I'm on the beach with two socks on. <laughs> it's cold. Lord have mercy. All right. I think we need to pay some bills and go to this commercial real quick. All right. Let's do and it. then we have our next guest coming up. Yeah. Well, All right, let's hit it. Shout outs to the person. Oh, okay, yeah, we got to do the shout outs. I forgot about that. My bad. All right. all right. That radio station be jamming. Y'all need to check what? that out. <laughs> what what station is it again? Life Radio. Wait, wait. I didn't hear you. Say it again. Life Radio. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And um, it's it's actually coming along pretty well. Yeah. So, oh, and if anyone knows of any DJs that look to get on the show. Please let us know, you know, inbox us on any of the social media sites that we have. 
um, feel free. If they're looking to be on a um, radio station with their show or podcast or what have you, you know, reach out to us. We will definitely um, look into that and create that, help them create that platform. So we're not just here for us. We want to help the community and help anyone else as well. So awesome. There That's you go. Awesome thing. Yep. Yeah. So, so we, radio is good. It's good to have, you know, you get to learn stuff about what's going on in your community and mm -hmm. you know, especially when the, when the station can be picked up anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. 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 I loved the radio when I was in it. Uh, absolutely loved it. So, yeah. So, who we yeah. Shout out to? so we're going to do some shout outs. Yeah. Who we shouting out? Go ahead. You go. Well, you want me to go first? Because I want you to go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, you know, I was riding down the road the other day and um, minding my own business. <laughs> well, never mind his business. <laughs> you know, and then, then you know, you know how you you hear that that siren coming and you got, oh my goodness, I got to pull over and you know, you pull over to the side and, and the, the uh, emergency services come through. Mm -hmm. and, and, but you know what? It made me think. It's like we never really appreciate these people until we either one got to pull over to the side of the road and we're kind of angry because we're a little bit later than we what we planned to be or the big one is we need them oh boy yeah my shout out is to the firemen you know who, who's out there they're, they're ready sitting and they I, some of these people sit there for like 24 hours straight without going home you know and then they get a call and they come out and they and they helping to put out your fire or something and you know we don't take time to really appreciate them unless something happens and then we think about oh let's let's show them some love so tonight i'm shouting out the firemen out there who are out there doing their jobs in these cities and keeping us safe and and, and helping us put fires out of our homes <laughs> so. and and you hit it on the head it's like we actually don't think about firemen you know um EMTs. I mean, you know, we don't mm -hmm. think about them until we actually need them. So that that's actually a good good point there. Yeah. I, I I agree with you on that. So and so so my shout out is you know as I order from Amazon <laughs> occasionally. Okay. Um, <laughs> We will. <laughs> In the background, saying, "Oh." <laughs> but as I, you know, order and you know, I watch my Amazon guy, FedEx guy, UPS guy. I think we don't give them enough credit for these truck drivers that are out here. Yeah, yeah. The the you know holiday is coming along. They've missed holidays or Thanksgiving or Christmas because they're delivering our packages, our gifts. So they're missing out on gifts of their own. Yeah. So I think, you know, these local truck drivers, be it Amazon or just delivering of packages or food, groceries, whatever, we don't give them enough credit and we don't think of them. So it's like, if you think about it, when there's like a tragedy in the world, be it hurricane or what have you, mm -hmm. They call in truck drivers right. to deliver, to really get to these areas that, you know, that the normal person cannot get through. So I think definitely next time you see your Amazon guy or your FedEx guy or just a local truck driver, just let them know how much we appreciate them sacrificing. Because they, if you think about it, they, they kind of sacrificing for us people yeah, in, real, in, in all honesty. You know, so, yeah, yeah. yeah we, so we learned, we learned quickly to appreciate them when the pandemic hit. Oh my gosh, definitely. <laughs> or let us not get our package on time. Yeah. You're like, I know I am I Amazon, no, I got you know packages coming. Why they don't deliver it on time? We <laughs> have an issue, but again, you know, I'm not talking about my shopping, you know, <laughs> extravaganza. Um <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about everyone else's. But again, when you see your next, you know, delivery guy or or just, you know, someone like my brother-in-law, he's a truck driver. It's like, just let them know how much we appreciate them for sacrificing and doing what it is they do every day. So we happy. Right. The All customer. Right. All right. All right. What we got next? Okay. Next we have, we have Miss Danielle Speaks. Ooh, we got Danielle. Yeah. 
I think it's about eight years. I think I met her. I think my eight, seven or eight years ago. She's a spoken word musician, singer, all that. You name it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna um, watch a little clip from her latest song. It's called No Better. I think that's. Yes. What I hope I hope I didn't mess that up, Daniel. But she'll <laughs> let you watch, know. <laughs> we're gonna watch her clip, and then we'll co we'll come back and we'll talk to Danielle. All right. To you, and yes, it's true. You keep me sound when life can make no sense. I wish I didn't have to fall. I get back up and I replay. Sometimes I get so weak. I'm so glad with you. You are my strength. I'm surrounded by your love. I know with you, I just can't miss. No question, I'm with you when I'm in the booth. And even when I sleep, I'm dreaming about you. And when I'm in the streets, I take you with me because it's personal. Yeah, it's personal. Time it with for no mess on my kiss, I'm gonna break Through all my pains and strife, you are perfect in my life No one like you, yeah, no one else like Jesus, yeah Lord, it's your breath in my lungs, I give it all to you No one does me better, Jesus, no one quite like you It's you who gives me purpose, so just let the heavens sing Lord, there's no one like you, so just let my presence ring You are the So glad you give me grace, so happy I know you If you ever leave me, I don't know what I would do It's true, I need you It's true, I need you I need you It's true, I need you It's true, I need you <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's funny that you that's the first thing you said because I didn't right. know that. I did not know that. I don't know why I didn't know that. I could read. 
<laughs> but I guess that's why I didn't know that because I haven't been to the website in quite a while. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. I love that. That's beautiful, though. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, so, forgive me for all the stuff. I, I was just saying some <laughs> stuff earlier today. I'm like, listen, I got to know these things ahead of time. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Take Sorry, the wheel next time. Take the wheel. <laughs> right? <laughs> so real. <laughs> so Daniel. You, so, yeah, go ahead, Daryl. How did how did you get started in this in this world of music? Uh I'm gonna blame it on my parents. <laughs> <laughs> blame it on them. It's their fault. You know, they they were the ones singing every week and uh, encouraged my brothers and sisters to do it also. So they started singing and then they were like, you know, go ahead and sing. And so we all grew up just singing in church. And then I'm going to bring blame it on my brother and sister because they went to perform in art school. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to like all of their stage performances, like, wow, like this, this is great. And they would come home and they would play all this weird music. I was like, I had never heard a country song in my life until they came home. <laughs> and I was like, what is this thing that you guys are doing? Um, so they just introduced me to uh, just a whole world of music, country, wow. jazz, um, mm -hmm. and mm. just like music that's just made for movies. And I remember just listening to all that going, that is incredible. And, and not to mention um, looking at all their uh, practices for the stage performance. and music has just always been there. Like my brother, I think I got my first instrument maybe when I was like eight years old or something. It was like a little guitar. Never learned to play it, but that's not the point. I had one. <laughs> and that's then, the point. Yeah, that, that's the point. I, it was there. It was in the house. Okay. Had it. And then um, I got hold of a keyboard and that was it. Mm. That was it. It's, me and music have been kicking it since then. Oh my goodness. So you were into jazz as well? Oh yeah. Jazz was my first love. Um, when I started out learning instrumentation, I was in band and I was uh, playing flute from a flautist. And once I got to high school and I found out I could play more than one instrument, like they actually allowed that. I was mm. like, oh, y'all done messed up now. Like I get to play it for free? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it was my goal to graduate learning how to play every instrument that my school had it was a, oh, wow. it was a smaller school and that was my goal so i started out on flute i switched to trumpet went over to trombone tried the french horn we were not talking to each other because that just wasn't working um <laughs> saxophone and then i said well can i cross uh learn and they were like mm -hmm. sure so they let me be an orchestra so I was like, okay, what instrument in orchestra do women not commonly play, which is the upright bass? So I said, give me that one. So I started playing upright bass, timpanis, percussion, like, again, anything that they would let me play, I was on it. I wow. Like, Sign me that, up. That That's for me. That is awesome. I played the flute, but I stopped that flute. That's it. I mean, I another trumpet player in the house. Huh? Hey, trumpet is a, a fun instrument. You can do a lot with a trumpet. <laughs> wow, I loved it, loved it, absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. So at twenty one, you got your first record deal. Tell us about that. I was. I don't even know how I met this group of people. Um, I, I honestly don't. It's just somehow we all came together, and um. It was a management team. We were all signed under a management team. So it was a female girl group. There were guys who were rapper. And then I was the solo artist slash producer mm -hmm. for all three groups. So I would write like little snippets for the for the rap group. Not much because I just rap was not my thing. I wasn't into it. Um, but I would write songs for the all girls group. And then I would write for me. And it just so happens that the manager that signed us shopped us to a, a major record label and they were like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, um, wow. So we went inside the studio and just started started trying to get music together and, and to get it released. And 
that was it. Like the the deal fell through just because a lot of altercations and I learned mm-hmm. the hard way that you have to be careful what you ask for because mm-hmm. if, you, if you're not ready for it or understand what it is that you're about to step into, it could wreck your entire life. Mm-hmm. And it, it had some very hard repercussions for all of us, I think. Right. Um, two of the girls, they never did music again after that record deal because it, oh, wow. it was just such a heartbreak and how the whole thing happened. Mm-hmm. They just stopped completely. So yeah. at what point and or was it at that point did you realize, okay, this is my calling to preach? I mean, to, you know, do a different genre of music, so to speak. Like at what point did you realize, okay, I need to go this way and not this way? After the record deal. Okay. After the record deal, because when we signed, we just wanted to do positive music. That, mm-hmm. That's all we wanted to do. We wanted to do something to help our community. And I'm I'm making these deals with God, talking about, hey God, you know, if I you know, I had my whole my whole plan planned out. I was like, okay, I'm gonna travel the world. I'm 21, I'm gonna travel the world for about four years. And then I'm going to get off the road and I'm just going to be a background music producer because I never wanted to be on stage in the first place. I always just wanted to write. Oh, wow. um, I just wanted to be a ghostwriter. That's it. I'm like, y'all can have all that, not being able to go to the movies, eat in peace. Y'all can have all that. Just give me the oh, check wow. and I'm fine. <laughs> Love my bank account. Good. I'm good. Right. So I was going to just go on the road and just come off the road and just spend the rest of my life writing. Um, but the record company, once we got signed, they changed everything. They told us positivity does not sell. What? Um, the men could only rap about sex, drugs, power, mm. and uh something else so they literally went through and started crossing out their lyrics mm. it was like right put a curse word here uh put oh. the n-word here no. like they just went through it the girls oh, no. they changed their look changed my look they were like you have to you have to dress more provocative and we could only talk about sex um parties mm. um mm. just it and that was it like they changed everything Wow. And over a period, and over those three months, we begin to become what we were singing, mm. what we were rapping about. So our whole attitudes change because they were feeding it to right. us. Like, this right. is what you got to do. You got to do. This is what you know. It's, it's don't just say it. You got to become it. So wow, we lost the deal. We were in there like throwing chairs through the sound booth. Like yeah, <laughs> you yeah, wow. Do that and, and keep a deal when you have so many people out here who can do it just as well as you do. Yeah. And, and that, that goes to, I mean, that kind of makes it a little bit understanding why the other, you know, members of your group didn't go back into music. Cause that would, I mean, that would really sour anyone's pie. Oh yeah. You oh know? yeah. I told God I wasn't doing it. I was yeah. like, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. If this is what the, the industry is like. Right. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, but God just showed me, he said, I never called you to use your gift for the world anyway. Wow. So that's yeah. why I didn't work. Yeah, you know, you're putting yourself in some place I never put you, mm-hmm. or I ever told you to go. Yeah, right. God never qualifies the call. He qualified. He calls the qualifier. So it's like you know, when you don't really know, you know, it's you. You kind of have to go through trials and tribulations to know. You know, so um, yeah. wow, yeah. That's, the, that's the record industry is his whole other beast, and that's that's hard. If you don't know about it. It, uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who are just starting out in music and just going through the process of getting your music out there and what mm-hmm. to expect when you get signed. And I talk to so many people that have these pipe dreams of, oh, I'm going to get signed. And then by the end of this year, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me know how that works for you. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> And that's what you did. You just nod your head and be like, okay, let me know how that works out. Yeah. 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 So in, yeah. in 20, 2010, you got ordained to be a minister. So you've been yes. a minister for 13 years. So Yes, that was my first ordination. Um, 
I was living in Kentucky at the time. And I never wanted to be ordained. Didn't ask for it when trying to be it. Because, <laughs> again, I'm cool in the back. Y'all ain't got to have right, me right. Just, just give you the check. We know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just walked into church one day, and, and my pastor was like, so when are you going to stop running? I was like, running for mm-hmm. what? She's like, yeah, okay. I'll talk to you after church. And uh, <laughs> I think it was, it was like it was on my birthday that year. That's why oh, I remembered wow. it. It was on my birthday. And mm-hmm. um. And the pastor's like, I'm going to ordain you. Mm. We're just going to do it. And I'm like, uh, okay. Said, All right. <laughs> I hope you know. No, I'm just joking. I knew I was called as a teenager. Right, right, I, knew. Right. I already knew when I was a teenager. When I was 14 years old, God had already showed me. But I just didn't know how it was going to go. Right, right. And like your pastor said, when you going to stop running? So. <laughs> wow. Them track shoes was laced. <laughs> I, <laughs> two socks and all, boy. <laughs> I, I was gone. <laughs> I believe Look, it. That's how do you feel about your your music now? You know, you so you 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 were ordained thirteen years ago, and your your music is is excellent. Oh <laughs> now, my gosh! Like, uh, so, yes. I, so how do you feel? How do you feel about the direction of it going now? Now, it, now, granted, after 13 years, it's just gone through a, a transformation. Because when I first started out, I did not do anything rap. I, I started out doing spoken word and singing. Mm. I never, I never wanted to do anything rap because that, again, jazz and orchestra. That's that's my jam right there. That's my vibe. Right. right. Um, and to the Lord, you know, it's like, hey, there is a generation of people that this is their language. Mm, so right. if you're going to do the gospel, I want you to speak it in all every language that you can, that I, I'm sending you to do it. And I'm like, oh, man, OK. So my first CD, I pretty much wrote everything on that. Um, I'm talking about music production wise and everything. And then my second one, I wanted to kind of stretch out there to see what I could do, really, just to see what I was capable of doing. So I collabed with a lot of different people, a lot of different producers, like the music was was all over the place. Um, But here's what happened. The more people heard me rap, the more they wanted me to do it, even though that's not what I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And when I got nominated for um, an award uh, in, in Tampa, they were like, I didn't get nominated just for being a female rapper. I was actually in another category. I was nominated in two categories. Mm -hmm. But they told me I had to pick one. Oh. And and everybody was like, okay, just pick rapping. And I'm like, "Uh, I don't know. Like, there's so many people who can do it better than I, and that's their their lane. Mm -hmm. Like, my music is across genres. I didn't want to just pick one. But they told me I had to pick one. So that from that point everything was just like hip hop you're a hip hop artist you're a hip hop artist and i was i wasn't really okay with that because i knew i wanted to do more i wanted to get back to musicality wow. i wanted to get back to the violins the saxophones i wanted to get back to true musicianship mm-hmm. um so what, by the time i got to unstoppable i was like yeah i want to i want to kind of introduce me, my creativity back into it again. So again, music wise, all over the place, just all over the place. And I loved it. This year, when it came to no one better, God told me, I want you to go back to what I first called you to do. Mm. Stop letting people put you in a box that I didn't create. Dictate your motion. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't tell you that you were just a one talent person. Mm-hmm. But you're letting people tell you you're a one talent person. Stop doing that. Mm-hmm. And that's how no one better came came about. I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to what I was first doing, which is being creative with music and then being creative with my with my voice and coming out of the lane of just being a yes. mm-hmm. CHH artist. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And that, that one, that tune is just so like, it's so smooth and like peaceful, relaxing. Like you could just sit back and like bob your head to it, you know, <laughs> you know, just like rock with it. You know, it's such a smooth, like, I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. Thank you. All right. So anything job. new coming on the, on the horizon? Oh man. 
Any so, rapping? No. So much, I have a lot of everything coming up, okay? <laughs> um, next year, because uh, this year I signed with Har Harvest G Music Group. Um, I did not think I was going to sign to another label. Um, and I know, Gerald, you and I have talked before. I was like, I've had a couple other uh, independent artist deals, and the contract was just horrible. Like, it was oh, wow. just horrible. They just really try to take advantage of you almost more than the major record labels do. And I was like, mm. I just don't want to, I don't want another contract. And I sat down with this particular music group. They, they saw me on Facebook or something, reached out to me and said, hey, let's talk. We talked, I prayed about it. It's like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Signed the contract in September. And I think right now counting, I have about four to five different songs. Mm. that I'll be releasing for next year. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I want to release more. The, and the, and the only way I won't release more is if my label stops me. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> but I want to release more than just those That's four. That's awesome, though. Yeah, because you're so multi-talented. It's like you just can't stop it from coming out. It's like you have to mm. release it. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Right. And we can play it on the station. Ooh, this is good. <laughs> Ooh, I tell you what, if I if, pray about it, if I get this jazz song finished, oh, it's 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 gonna happen. It's I, gonna I happen. want I want it. I did a, a a song where I have an artist named Nick Kazi who came and played violin over this mm. jazz track that I wrote. Mm. Oh my goodness! And, uh, boy, bad boy, bad. Whew. And I'm I'm just I'm just trying to put those those finishing touches violin on that. And, Baby, yeah. violin and a little Spanish guitar, man. The, the track yeah. is back. Yeah, keep us posted. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Danielle, we want to thank you for coming and spending a little time with us tonight. Um, oh yes. We see yes. Great things coming for you. I didn't like I said I didn't know you was a minister, but hey. <laughs> and I apologize for all the drinking I did on my birthday. I'm sorry. No, no apologies. No apologies. Hey. <laughs> No, can you keep up the awesome work that you're doing? You know, it's it's, it's great. You've you've been a great friend, and you know, I I think it was 2016 that we met, but I'm not sure. But it it's, it's been, been a while. while. It's and, been a while. And uh, you know, I, I still think um um what was the name? Match uh, Marchman. Nicole Nicole Marchman. That's yeah, how we Nicole met Marchman, through her. You know, we met through her, and you know, God rest her soul. But um, I appreciate that connection, you know, because we're still connected today. So I appreciate you. Hey, thank you for having yes, me on. And thank, thank you for being you. a good Absolutely. mentor. Like, right. yeah. this man right here, he has mentored me through a, a lot of stuff that I'm still trying to process. So right. thank you, Gerald. And thank you, mm -hmm. Tina, just for being a great host. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Don't let this be the last time. And I'm going to do better when you come back on. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, we dropped your link. <laughs> Thank you we so much. Your website link in, into the chat so people could go to visit your website and check you out. And, yes, absolutely. And, and, and one thing I forgot to mention earlier was uh, Danielle was also on the cover of our magazine a couple years yeah. ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I have. Uh, oh, oh, I have it down there, but it's it's dark. Is I don't have my light, so I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Dan. <laughs> thank you. Thank All you, right. guys. Have a good evening. All you right. Too. Thank All you, right. darling. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my Bye -bye. God. That's so cool. Awesome. <laughs> we have such great people. Yeah. So we got to pay some bills real quick here. And... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> who is Bill? I want to know who he is. Why do you keep coming for us? The one you got to write the check out to every month. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Hi, I'm Gerald C. Anderson, Sr., co-host of The Life Live. The Life Live is the voice and soul of the people. And when the people speak, we listen. Thanks to feedback from our viewers, we're branching out with a new initiative to support youth authors and the Life Live show. Through an application and selection process, the Inspiring Youth Authors Program will provide publishing packages absolutely free to youth authors who have not been sponsored previously through the initiative and are aged 8 to 18. Your donations totaling $500 along with the complimentary services of the Life Publishing will enable one child to achieve dreams they previously thought unattainable. In appreciation, all donations of $100 or more will be acknowledged by our bi-weekly radio show. 
Donations of $500 or more will be acknowledged on the show and in our printed publication, The Life Magazine. Thank you in advance for partnering with us to inspire our youth. Visit www.thelifelive.com for more information. Yeah, that commercial takes on a whole new meaning after hearing uh, Norman's story. <laughs> I was I was thinking the same thing. Six years old, he knew. Yeah, Six he knew. Six years old. We got kids out here that know that they got books in them and stories in them that they can write and publish. And, you know, the only thing that's really stopping them is that right, the guidance, it's, you know, the guidance and, the, and the, of course, the money. And the support, yeah, the support, the financial support, the, you know, just the mentorship sometime that you know is is needed as well but mm -hmm. but yeah it's like these kids know early on we right. just have to pay close attention right and be willing to support and help so yeah yeah so next we have a spoken word artist who is amazing she's a writer this young lady a, I tell you. a speaker writer singer and an actor and all those words describe uh, the creative force that is Randy Norman. Over the past 20 years, she has been developing her gift of spoken, spoken and written word. Mm -hmm. Randy has written and performed several spoken word pieces, most notably Brokenness, Roller Coasters, and I Wish I Had a Red Dress. But the one we like yeah. is, <laughs> is the answer. And that's what you all are going to do. <laughs> baby. Yeah. So we're gonna play the answer and then and right after the answer, we will have Randy J. Norman on the stage. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. You have questions. Hallelujah, glory. I understand that sometimes we have questions. Glory. And I welcome them, saith the Lord. Your wrestle with thoughts present a moment to talk, to converse, to chat, for you to speak and I to show you where I'm at right here. Come to me is not just a figure of speech or a not so rational thought. It's exactly what I sought to incite when I allowed myself to be caught and placed in a place to seem to have no mercy or grace. Your pace is perfect. As I walk with you in the cool of the day, I'll show you how the answers you seek are in fact in the answers you speak. When you open up my word and trust what you see, it's me. The great I am, the one who walked and talked like you, endured the cross so that you'd be new, beaten and torn, hung and adorned with thorns so that you'd see yourself. This lash right here produced that tear that stands for the fear that I'm not near. This hit over there is for every blank stare you share with the world when you think I don't care. These nails in my hands keep them open for you to place all that you have, including questions and what you do. These thorns on my head pierce the thoughts in my mind, releasing those thoughts is yours, so you'd always know how to find me. I buried your darkest days and coldest nights in a tomb with me, covered in light so bright so that all they could see is me, covering you, glowing in you, raising you so that you'd be brand new in me, yet you, unique, one of a kind, and never blind to all I've done, and always seeking to be the one who will ask and keep on asking, who will knock and keep on knocking, who will seek and keep on seeking, contending for the faith and fighting for your life in me. You have questions. I am the answer, saith the Lord. He is holy. Holy are you, God. Holy, holy, holy is his name. Holy Hallelujah. Is name. With everything we have. With everything. Oh, I love you. 
We worship you in this place with everything we have. Everything I've got, Ooh, our heart. my heart will sing how I love you. Hallelujah. If you don't Dirty. feel that in your tube socks, uh, <laughs> I, I, you got to feel all that. All yeah, that. that thing touches me every time I hear it. Mm -mm. Cre creative force, I think that's an understatement. <laughs> my God. Creative force. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just want to start handing out the offering tray. I'm like, I don't know what else to <laughs> say. Beautiful. So I Absolutely that, I, beautiful. I'm just like, oh my God. It, mm. How did that even let's just start with that? How did how did you get there? How did you arrive there with that? The answer. How did that all come? Um, so like most things, um, for me, um a lot of times things just, they start with a request and we knew for Easter that year we wanted to, um, I got asked to do a piece and to join in with another poet that's a friend of mine, Jason McGriff, um, which there's a whole backstory between our relationship and how I even began to do spoken word. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we got asked to do a piece. And so I said, all right, well, we'll see what thus saith the Lord, because I don't write, he does. So we'll see what <laughs> happens. Um, because I, I I really don't. It's whatever mm -hmm. he wants to say. Um, and then um, Jason was like, well, you see what you got, and I'll see what I got, because if we're going to do this piece together, you know, to see what we have. And so I was just sitting, I was like, I, Holy Spirit ain't saying nothing. So, you know, I got nothing. And so one day he said, oh, I got something. I was like, okay. And he had questions. His piece was all about questions. Ah. And so I was like, okay, all right. I said, well, let me sit with that and see what that said the Lord. And Holy Spirit said the answer. And then one mm. day it just started to come. It just started to come. And I was weeping while it was coming. And mm. I was like, fast enough i couldn't type fast enough and then i was done I was wow done. he was mm. done i was done um wow yeah. and, and yeah. we sent it and was like yeah that's our that's our piece for easter <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was a piece of easter that's for sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, oof, oof, oof. yeah oh yeah, yeah. You, um, you 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 came to the life via um, a good friend of mine of ours, Renata mm -hmm. um, Smith, and yeah. she uh, we we got to thank her for that. Oh commitment. my gosh, yeah, because uh, we played a couple of your pieces on the show. Oh my gosh, yes, every time it's just like really powerful. You know, we just I think somebody made the comment in the chat that it was powerful, and and, and that mm -hmm. piece is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, <laughs> the answer, you know, I mean, we 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 kind of know that, but then when we hear somebody do a, do a piece on it like that, it just touches your soul. Oh you know? my gosh! You know, yeah. every part of you, yeah, it just, you just tell that God just used you to to bring that word forth. So hallelujah. So tell <laughs> tell us about yourself. You know how what, how did you get started in spoken word? So um, my I got started in spoken word actually for many many years. I used to say. I don't write, like, I didn't want any part of a microphone. I didn't want any part of a platform. I didn't want any part of any of that. Um, growing up, I was a band kid, you know, and so I, I played clarinet, but, and I was always that kid who just wanted to be in the back in the booth. you like, I just mm -hmm. want to be in the, back in the booth in the corner of the dog. Don't, you ain't got to see me. You don't got to do none of that, you know? <laughs> um, and I always have friends that would push me, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. no, you need to do this. No, you need to do that. No, you need to do this. And um, after many, many years of all of those things and a lot of growth, a lot of development, a lot of conversations with God, a lot of yeses, a lot of those things, I still used to say, I don't write. So now if you want me to sing it, I'll sing it. If you want me to do it, I'll do it. But I don't write. I don't write. Mm -hmm. And um, one night I was minding my own business and sleeping. 
and in the middle of the night, Holy Spirit woke me up, and it was mm-hmm. like it was like a urgent now. And I got up and I grabbed my phone. Of course, my husband sleeps, so I grab my phone. And I go to the bathroom, close the door, and I'm sitting there, and the words just begin to come. And so I'm typing, mm-hmm. see all of the things, you know, because you sleep. I was sleep, and I just started to type. I just started to type everything that's coming. Mm-hmm. And then when he finishes speaking, I look over it all, like, and I fix all the things. I got all the red squiggly lines, all of the things, because everything's moving so fast. And mm. so I fix all the typos. I do that. And then I look at it, and I close my phone, and I went back to bed. It was like a... Oh, night, wow. And I just went back to bed. So when I woke up the next morning, I was like, was I dreaming? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what happened? Like, Did that really happen? Did that really right? happen? Mm-hmm. And so I grabbed my phone and I looked and sure enough, there was a piece written and I was like, what is this? Right. I don't <laughs> yeah. even know what this is. Right. And then the Lord told me I needed to show it to my friend, Jason McGriff, who wow. did the questions piece to that um, years later. And he said, I need to, uh, I need to show it to him. And I was like, oh, see God, you doing, I don't know what you doing with <laughs> Okay. And so I showed it to him and I was like, what is this? And he read it. I'll never forget. We were standing in the foyer at church and he read it and he said, oh, you need to minister that. And I was like, no, 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 (laughs) no. And he was like, yes, yes, yes. That's what you're going to do. And then literally we were standing there and coming through the door was our drama director. And at the time, like spoken word and poetry was all up underneath the drama ministry. And our drama director was coming through. But this is the funny thing about that is that my instructions from God about my drama director was that because I had a strong no to Mm -hmm. everybody. No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not going. No, I had a real Mm -hmm. strong no. (laughs) But my instructions from God to her was she got a yes. No matter what she asked me to do, I was to say yes to her. Mm -hmm. Well, here she comes through the door as we're having this conversation and he tells her, hey, Miss Randy got something and she need to minister it. So she stopped, she read it and she was like, oh yeah, okay. So in two weeks, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, exactly. whatever you say, Miss I. Uh, Okay, and that was the first time that I did spoken word. Wow, wow, okay. Well, we appreciate her doing that. We appreciate them pushing you out there because a lot of people probably have benefited from hearing your piece. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we we get called, we get pushed out there to do things that that we we think we're not ready for, you know. As as you heard from Danielle before you, she Mm -hmm. was. It's kind of funny you both said this thing saying the same thing. Oh, you yeah. wanted to be in the shadows, you know, in the background. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> you, get, yeah. you get pushed up to the front, you know. And you get, mm-hmm. you get pushed out there. And you know, I'm and I'm so grateful. And I believe that that's why it's so important for everybody to have a community of people uh, who see in you the things and that support, you, yes. You don't see in you, or you're too afraid to see in you for yeah. whatever reason. You mm-hmm. gotta have a community of people around you that will not accept no, they will not accept mm-hmm. you hiding, they will not accept that. And so mm-hmm. they're gonna push you and they're gonna challenge you and they're mm-hmm. gonna tell you and pour into you and affirm you and all of those things. You gotta have that community of people. People because they are going to help you step out into the thing that God has called you to do and step into who you are created to be. That is you know, so true. There are people on the other side of your yes, there are people on the other side of the message of the thing that God has for you. And I never forget because as a I have this cup that I carry with me all the time, and I love this cup. It's a Dr. Seuss <laughs> cup. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a Dr. Seuss cup, and it says, "Oh, the Dr. Seuss go." Um, and so, books. yeah, and I'll never forget my aunt. My aunt gave me that this cup when I graduated from grad school. Uh, well, she gave me that book. She gave me the book when I graduated from mm-hmm. grad school. Um, and I carry this cup with me. And one of the things, uh, hey, this is my auntie. She's the one who gave me this cup. Oh, who gave me the book? <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> 
Um, she gave me the um, All the Places You Go book. And one of the things about this particular cup, it reminds me of that all the places you'll go if you don't settle for safe. You can oh. become anything that God wants you mm. to become. And he can take you to some amazing places. Mm. And I have, I had another cup that I wore out because I carried this cup so much. Like I wore the cup out. You couldn't see anything on the cup. You can see any words of the cup or anything. But <laughs> the cup was still doing what the cup does. It kept everything hot. It kept everything cold. It was right, cold. Right. I knew why I bought the cup. But God told me I needed to get another one. Because I needed to have the message on it. And it was like, oh, it's the same message, but it's a different cup. And that became something that hmm. how God began to show me about even all the different avenues and vehicles that he uses me in. I sing, I act, I do poetry, I write, and all of these things. But you are before a different group of people. There's a different audience for poetry. There's a different audience mm -hmm. for theater. There's a mm -hmm. different audience for music. There's a different audience for the written word. There's a different audience. And so that's, that's a new group of people that get to encounter what God has put on the inside of me. And ultimately, my hope and my prayer is always that they encounter him. And so mm. it's a new group of people that get to encounter him. The more avenues I say yes to, the more groups of people get to encounter him. There you go. Mm. Are you a preacher yeah. too? I know, right? Shoot. <laughs> 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 you missed that in your bio too. <laughs> I, I am not ordained. I am not ordained. I, do, so I, I speak from time to time, though. I do get invited to come and speak. And yeah, you yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it sounded like that to me, you know. I don't know. <laughs> me you know. too. I'm like, and we just talking about Dr. Seuss, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's yeah, like, deep. I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah, everything <laughs> speaks. Everything. Yes. Because God can use anything. That's true. He yeah. can use anything if he used the bush. If he mm. used the donkey, uh, he right. can use the cup. That's right. Man, man, that you you right about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, baby. So, tell, so tell us, tell us who Randy is when she's not on stage, not performing, not doing the spoken word. You know, at home relaxing, yeah. trying married, to stay warm. You married, trying, trying to stay warm. warm. <laughs> who is Randy then? Yeah, I am a wife of eighteen years. Um, I have been married to my husband for eighteen years, but we have known each other since we were eighth graders. Mm -hmm. um, I am a mommy cool. of two teenagers. I have a 16-year-old daughter, Miss Layla, and um, a 13-year-old son, Master Trey. They and my whole household is a household of creatives. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so yeah, my husband plays sax, um, and my son is a drummer, and my daughter is a visual artist and a singer. Um, and so we have lots of fun in our household. I am a servant. I'm a servant. I love people and I love God's people. So um, I serve um, at Revealing Truth Ministries and I just love my RTM family. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned and grown so much just being a servant. Um, and yeah. yeah, and so I find myself serving all the time, no matter where I am, you'll find me serving somebody somewhere in some capacity. <laughs> And that's always a good thing. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my auntie. <laughs> Another auntie. Yeah. That's a whole all your aunties on your auntie. Yeah, I, th I yeah. think I think we're gonna have an ordination here pretty soon. You know? I know, right? I hope I get an invite. <laughs> exactly. We'll be talking about Pastor Norman. <laughs> we're going to Pastor Norman's church. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. we uh, yeah. so what is there anything new coming out for uh, for you in the future? I've got all kinds of stuff going on. 2023 has been an adventure for me, mm. it's been another one of those send me out, go God. And so, I was um introduced to the theater world and and drama in church many years ago. And then, you know, God had shifted me to do some other things, and I was really focused on vocally and singing and doing some of those things. And in 2023, 
um, I got hired for my first professional theater gig. And so yeah. all year I've been in one production after the next. Um, I've probably, I've been with Stageworks. I've been with American yeah. Stage theater. Um, I've been with Think Tank um, and Tampa Rep Theater. And so those are four of the major professional theater companies here in town. And so I've been in productions all year long. And so I'm closing That's out the awesome. year. With, yeah, I, I got to do a very cool school tour this summer. And so that was this fall. And so that was great fun. And so I'm closing out the year. I've got some spoken word stuff that I'm doing. I've got some stage readings that I'm doing and then starting in um, the beginning of 2024, I'll be in another stage production um, called Straight White Men um, with Tampa Rep. And so I'm super excited about that because I get to do a little bit of writing for that production as well. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to all the that things. Is so that exciting. Are, um, yeah, for 2024. And so, okay. yeah, all while at the same time, you know, and again, it's like I've got all the things happening kind of all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because I also sing, I sing with a group um, here, yeah. friends and the Levitical worshipers. But then I also sing with Maverick City Gospel Choir, and so you mm -hmm. know, um, I think we might be gearing up for some stuff. Um, you know, there's always rumblings and talks, so I don't know <laughs> what 2024 holds for that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm just excited. I'm like, we're gonna walk. I'm through excited this for you. Oh my gosh! So, yeah. Yeah. So 20, 2024 sounds very exciting for you, but oh, I, I yes. think. We, I think we need to add one more thing to that. What's yeah, that? I was, I was sitting here thinking as you were talking, and I, I thought. I wonder yeah, if you're Norman, thinking what I'm thinking. Norman was on the cover of, of the summer. Danielle was on the cover a couple of years ago. So we need to make it a trifecta. Yes. 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 So yes. Yes. We need to talk about that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. <sighs> and yes. I'd be honored. It'll be an honor. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it happen. Yeah, it's done. Right. It's done. Done and done. Absolutely. <laughs> you deserve it. And and we are like your biggest fans. Like we, uh, I adore you. I just think ever since the first one, I was like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> yeah. I love that's the life family awesome. and my right. Renata. That's my heart. I love me some Renata. <laughs> yes, we yes. Mama together. That's how we came to know each other. And so mm. I absolutely adore her. And so yeah. I'm super right. grateful for her introducing us. All right. Well, we appreciate it's, you coming yeah. by tonight and then talking to us and sharing with us your journey. And we will, we will definitely be talking to you again. Absolutely. We're Absolutely. Gonna, we're going to make that cover happen. So we will be having oh, yeah. some more conversations. With you, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So she is so interview. awesome. <laughs> she is really awesome. Yeah. I just, another I, show. Uh, another one and another one. Isn't that like, I don't even know who that was, but I heard it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a rapper guy. I don't know. Mm. But anywho, so who we have, have um up next show. Um. So next show will be Yolanda Lee, I think. December 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yolanda Lee, who's also a spoken word artist, a mm -hmm. good friend of mine. Paulette Jackson is an author, and she was in, in our magazine, I think in the spring. She was in, in mm -hmm. and I, I can't pronounce this last person. <laughs> Rama Matahabi. I will butcher that up big time. <laughs> and, I, and you know, the only reason why I know how to say it because I interviewed her. Right. <laughs> yeah, who's she's, she's an well, actor. You know. Yeah, she's an actress. Yeah. So, so. We can't wait to have those three on. It's going to be a great show again. So, we definitely like to have you guys back. Yes, this is awesome. But again, you guys, um, don't forget about the Young Authors um, donation if you want to help, you know, um, help a kid reach his dreams of becoming an author, writer, or so forth. Um, definitely reach out to support that. And continue to listen to the radio show, Life Radio. Um, and if you know any DJs or anyone that wants to establish a podcast or show, and need a radio platform, please feel free, have them reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, everyone knows how to reach us on social media. We're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, just to just to let people know the on the on the life radio gospel hour is is from six to eight Monday through Friday and six to noon on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Then we have uh, jazz Friday night jazz from six to midnight, and uh, from sorry from eight to midnight on eight Fridays. Mm-hmm. And then on Sundays we have Sunday evening jazz, which is from six to midnight. Yes. Yeah. So it's exciting, and um, we have a lot. A lot of hats we're wearing, including this one. I got to get you one of these. (laughs) I'm sure. It's going to say Miami Dolphins on it, though. No, we're not doing that. No. (laughs) All right, let's wrap it up. All right, so have a good night, everyone. And um, I guess we will see you next show. Now it's time to say goodbye. See you real soon.